Well, it's Chick Day around here. Every single week, we hatch cute, adorable chicks. And I've had the pleasure of sharing these chicks and selling them locally to so many people that are just ready for their chick journey. Now, I went live last week on our Facebook. Facebook is very different than YouTube. I have different subscribers and followers. Some people like different platforms like Instagram or TikTok. I try to share on all of them. So I went live on Facebook to talk about chickens because that's where most of my business and chicken information um, come and go from. So I went live and I'd like to share that with you. It was such a successful live. It has been shared so many times. I've received so many questions and so much business from that live. And my favorite part is when people are messaging me telling me that it was so helpful for them and their chicken journey so I wanted to share it with you it is close to an hour long I hope you love it if you don't mind sharing it that will help get all this great chicken information out to all the people that are new to chickens and it'll help them with their journey this spring you guys thank you so much and here it is hello everybody it is 12 o'clock and we are going live on Facebook it is Thursday at noon we are here in Winchester Oklahoma and we are going live to discuss chicks we are going live to discuss chicks so we have one viewer in here hello hey if you wouldn't mind uh comment if you can my one viewer and my one share so i can see where possibly my comments are on this home screen okay we got three people in here we've got three comments you guys go ahead and give us a thumbs up or any kind of reaction thumbs up thumbs down heart mad angry sad whatever you want give us a little reaction um that helps engage in facebook and that's also what helps facebook take my information and put it out there to the world in the in the webs and then actually share this and all my content with other people i have not been a big facebook live or video person but in the next month starting today i'm going to start really focusing on facebook um lives and interactions instead of just going on my paragon homestead hatchery page and posting all my chickens and, and doing that well we've got four people in here and i welcome you welcome welcome um like i said this is my first live can you hear that back there that's some chicks so i'd like to discuss spring chicks i'd like to discuss what's going on in our area right now um how we're all getting excited i'd like to discuss where I've been and what I'm doing now, if any of you recognize me, I'm Chrissy from Beeline. I had thousands and thousands of people get chicks from me last year and the year before. If you came down to Mounds, Oklahoma to Beeline Feed, we were one of the top places in the whole Northeast Oklahoma to get all the special chickens that you need. Um, we did sell the store in September. We no longer own it. But since last year, let's see here, maybe the year before, I started my own hatchery here at home. So it is called Paragon Homestead Hatchery, and I hatch only certain breeds of chickens. Um, I'm not into the, the big box store type chicken breeds that you can find anywhere. Um, and they're wonderful breeds, and they're wonderful chickens, and Ch Tractor Supply, I was all those places, they're wonderful places, um, totally shop there. But I do kind of more specialty, and that's what I specialize at Beeline Feed whenever um, we owned it. More specialty, give you guys a little variety, a little options. I know that Rainbow Hashing Eggs, Rainbow um, Egg Envy, rainbow laying chickens is big for me it's a rabbit hole that I go down um, and I I can say that most of my customers went down it too I'm gonna take these off I can see you just a little bit better with the glare so I'm sitting up here at my desk today because this is where I get the best light from the north and um, let's look at some chickens I've got 11 viewers in here welcome welcome you guys let us know when you come in drop your name down at the bottom and let us know that you're here um, let me quiet down this phone and I'm going to show you some chicks and then we can start talking about some of the processes that us as breeders that like to hatch and incubate some of the processes that we're going to be doing this spring and what you're going to see on Facebook from everyone on the different pages. You're going to see them advertising the words that they use, the things that they say. And I would love to discuss some of the things you should watch out for because there's lots of scams right now. I have my own personal pages called Broken Air Backyard Chickens and there is so many scams. I will get about 50 requests to join about 49 will be scammers and I'll show you how to how to look for that. Um, I hate seeing that all the time. Hi Shelby, how are you? You love hanging out in colorful basket. Me too. I'm not going to talk about like 
eggs and show you eggs today. I am going to talk about egg color and I'm going to show you some chips. So let's get started and have our first special guest. Who should it be, you guys? You want to see a salmon faverol, a black copper moran, a white silky that's a little bit older, or one of our olive eggers? Comment and let me know what you want to see first. I don't see any. Will I have to pick myself? Okay. I'm going to pick myself, you guys. <laughs> well, the first thing staring at me right here is one of the older ones. They're a little bit bigger. And this, this is a white silky. And she is about three weeks old. Stop. Yeah. She says, you put me in a box with pine shavings, and I've never seen them before in my life. So this is one of our white silkies, you guys. It's the only silkies that we have here on the farm, but God, they produce well and they're friendly. The babies are friendly. The rooster's not friendly. Say hi. So she's barely, barely getting out of her fluff. The really cold weather um, and hunkering everybody down and the stress the last probably 14, 15 days with all the sub-zero temperatures and the freeze and the ice and the snow. Um, of course, they're inside, but it's just been pretty stressful. We've had to put um, covers over them. We check them every two hours. So they have been focusing more on staying warm than growing their feathers. But there is a white silky right there. Hi, Dee Dee. How are you? Sentimental Freshies, hello, how are you? Okay, Olive, oh, I see here, Shelby Day says Sam Favreau. Okay, you guys, so here is um, here is a white silky, and I'll show you some of the characteristics about a white silky. Come on, honey, come on, honey, come on. Okay, so silkies have black skin. <laughs> Bobo, if you guys watch me on our YouTube channel, Bobo's like, I hear a baby. Um, so silky, you wanna see it? There you go. You guys, this is Ruger's checking out, making sure that the baby's okay. You got is that baby okay? Is that baby okay? Yeah. All right. So uh, silkies have black skin, as you can see here. They have five toes. Their skin, bone, and meat are black. So whenever you see all these um, hoaxy posts on all these chicken pages about um, AM Samani's and black eggs and all that kind of stuff. This is very similar as far as the skin is black. Um, these lay little bitty white eggs. They're a bantam breed and they're the puppy dog of the chicken world. Um, say hi. Say hi. Yep, she said hi. Okay, let's go to the next one. What was first on here? Okay, Shelby Day. Shelby Day said Favorols. Okay, guys. So my Favorols came from Showbirds that were showed in uh, one awards. I bought them from a breeder that unfortunately was getting out of a lot of bee, uh, birds due to health issues. So here is a salmon faverol. Look at those puppy cheeks. What? Is that sun in your eye? What is it? Puppy cheeks fully bearded. They come out the most brightest yellow I've ever seen in any chucks. I mean, they're they're brighter than <laughs> they're brighter than ducks to me. What is it? She doesn't like it. So they also are fully feathered legs, and they also have five toes, just like the silkies. There's not a lot of breeds. I believe it's silkies, fireballs, and houdans. Aren't they cute? Yeah, so in about two weeks, we'll be able to tell if this is a boy or a girl. If they're a boy, they'll start getting really dark feathers, and they'll get a line on their chest here and here, and then they'll get a line on, on their shoulders right there and there. And then also at two or three weeks, you'll see that there'll be some black feathers on their feet, which there never is on the girls. So you do have to let them grow a little bit to find out. So all the chicks that I have here that I sell um, besides cream leg bars are straight run. So this, what, you like it? Does it feel good? <laughs> so this is a one that we have here. This is salmon faverols. The next one will be our olive eggers. I think that's the next one. Yeah, sentimental freshies said olive eggers. So my olive eggers. Here's one. I grabbed a gray one so I could tell them tell them apart here in the box. You guys, we're getting some dust and dander all over my computer. So my olive eggers are multi generational olive eggers. So they are F3 through F5. Now what that means is they have been back cross olive egger to olive egger that many generations. So three means three times, five means five times. They are in with a black copper moran rooster that came from a very dark egg. So the hope would be darker greens like avocados or 
You're so cute. Avocado or just a dark green, but sometimes they will also be dark brown. Um, not brown red like a black copper moran, but a, I call it Kalamata. So 50% um, chance of dark green, 50% chance of brown, but this is what we want in our Easter baskets or our rainbow hatching egg baskets. We want that dark green. So I've got several projects where I do have light green that are being created in my different pens, but these ones are to be dark green and dark brown. So there is many different girls in there yeah they don't all come out gray most of them do come out black We've got nine viewers in here and 12 comments thank you guys oh isn't she cute so you can see this one's dad like i said it got the feathered feet from its dad yeah you're being so cute you're being so cute all right that leaves black cup marin let me get your feet dusted off yeah this is, oh, and this is our black copper moran. They are black. They have four toes. They have feathered feet. Yes. When they're born, they have white on the tips of their wings on their chest and neck. All the way down. As they grow their big girl, big boy feathers, and they'll lose all that white. Now, I've been breeding these for a couple of years, but it also took a couple of years before I got these to find ones that I thought were good enough, standard of perfection, and also dark enough. So after two years, I found these um, out of Pennsylvania, and I had the eggs sent here. I actually am. Um, I have videos out on YouTube of unboxing the eggs, hatching the eggs, um, the whole process, and then I also have a video of one year later, so showing their progression as they grew and that they started laying eggs themselves. So these are my black copper morans, and like I said in my little short yesterday, they are from Bev Davis, April Howington, Little Peddlers, and Greenfire Farms. That's all the genetics that are in my chicks here. I do have a black copper moran that is from Black Copper Farms. If you guys know Stephanie, she's awesome. Uh, I do have a rooster that I bought from her that I do have in with my olive eggers, hoping to bring that really dark brown. She's so cute. All right. Thank you, Carmel. Hey, Carmel, how are you? I am gonna, are you in here, honey? Yeah. Baby, will you, will you come in here and take these chicks out to the brooder or just, Take them out um, to the incubator. I'll get Jeremy to take them out so we don't have to hear. I just don't, they could stay in the box if I just put them in another room so we can hear each other on the live. Everyone say hi to baby love. Hi. Hi Jeremy. Where do you, where do you uh, go ahead and put them in my room. Put them in my room, that'll be great. All right guys, so let's talk about chicks. <sighs> Like I said earlier, um, Jeremy and I had beeline feed. We brought tons and tons of specialty and even some rare chicks to the Tulsa area. And that was last year and the year before. Last year was a huge, huge chick days. We had people from out of state coming. We had lines at four and five in the morning at our gate. We had lines wrapped around the outside of our building in freezing conditions. It was great. <laughs> Tristan said, sup, dude. Uh, he went out in the garage, Tristan. I'll tell him when he gets back in here. Um, my, my point of that is that um, our, my idea on what everybody wants as far as chicks or chickens, what they want for their family, if they want eating eggs, if they want pretty eggs, if they just want chickens as pets. Um, I was really informational and I shared a lot of information with thousands of people and that's why I'm on here today. I'm on here to give you some access to, to discuss anything with me or to talk to me about it. But um, like I said, we no longer own the feed store. We sold it so you won't be seeing any of the special um, chicks or chick days or, or anything like that. Um, I'm here. Uh, my page here that you're on is Paragon Ridge Ranch. That is our YouTube YouTube channel that is our farm name we have our hatchery that we have some of the chicks I just showed you that is Paragon Homestead Hatchery it's here on Facebook and then um, let's discuss chicks so I never stop hatching I have the big cabinet incubators I hatch every single week I collect eggs from Friday to Friday and on Friday evening whomever has committed to purchasing of whatever certain egg in certain quantities they will meet they will meet me on Saturday or Sunday to pick up eggs eggs are so important because they should never be more than 10 days old whenever you incubate them so they're available at the oldest one being seven days old because I don't ever want to compromise that they're very time sensitive it's not anything that you want to mess with um, so I collect from Friday to Friday and whatever is committed to I meet them on Saturday and Sunday um, what's not committed to goes in the incubator so every single week I have chicks coming out 
So every week they go in, every week they come out. Now the last 14 days has been disgusting with these temperatures. We are just trying our best to keep everybody alive. They are all alive, they're doing great. Um, we're gonna be moving them out of the barn either today or tomorrow because um, of the rain. I didn't wanna actually have to transport them and get them wet. So they have been surviving. They slow down of course on laying their eggs. Being out there every couple hours still didn't save many eggs. So I have not provided any eggs for sale because I didn't want to take the chance. Didn't want them to be cold, didn't want them to be old, didn't anything. So we will have eggs available um, in the next coming week. And I post that on our Paragon Homestead Hatchery page. Chicks. I have chicks available and I post them on Paragon Homestead Hatchery as far as like how many in quantities each week that I have available. We meet everybody in mounds for pickup. Now, springtime's coming, you guys, and everyone's getting the itch for chicks. And I know it's so hard to, to fight the urge to just buy chicks at the big box stores and just bring them home and just say, I'm going to do this thing. That is great. But some things that I wanted to tell you and, and kind of help you along if you're new to this, if you're not, then you're going to agree with me. The big box stores don't care that much about the chicks. Um, they're just doing their job. They're unboxing them and they're keeping them warm and they're putting them in a brooder. They often <laughs> switch signs on accident. Um, they'll say they're girls and they're not. Most of the big box stores do straight run. And what straight run means for just educating you on chickens is straight run means that you do not have any idea if they're boys or girls. Most of mine are all straight run. I, there's no way for me to find out. Like, I have no idea. So straight run means you don't know if it's a boy or a girl. But sometimes they market them as pullets, which are girls. So you buy them. And also when you buy them, sometimes they have a four or six chick limit. Hi guys, there's 16 people in here. If you're new and you just came in, go ahead and comment and tell us who you are. Hey, everybody right now, if you would, go ahead and comment and tell us where you're from. Put it down there in the comments so we could all see where you're from. I'm trying to scroll. It's not doing very good. Hold on. I'll leave that there and I'll scroll. Carmel, Christy, hi. Thank you. These are Joe Herda. Joe Herda does, um, all her leather work by hand and she sells these earrings at the rodeo she lives in oklahoma city she sells them at all the big horse events arkansas sentimental freshies welcome again she's they are from arkansas uh, yep dd says they're from bags uh, tristan said big box stores also cannot um give the proper information on the chips because they're not hatching them chrissy's an expert you got uh, get exactly what she says thank you tristan thank you so much me and tristan have um become friends over the last couple of years. I really miss seeing him and his family at the store, but we stay in touch. We text often and, and talk back and forth. Hi, mom and dad. Good to see you. Um, all right. So big box stores. So most of the time they're mislabeled as far as their breed and they're mislabeled as far as their sex. I have not had enough coffee today. Um, and honestly, like I said, it, it's not their fault. Um, a person's hired to do a job and they did their job. They saved the chickens, they got them out of the box, they got them warm, they put up a sign. So it's not the worker's fault. They're just not into it. It's not their love, it's not their heart, it's not their passion, so they, they really just don't care. So just watch what you get. There's so many times I, I see a picture of a two month old and somebody's on one of these pages like, I was told this was a, I don't know, a Rhode Island red and it's like a little white silky and you're like, yeah, no, sorry, buddy. That's not a Rhode Island red. So just um, look them up. If you don't care, that's great. If you don't care, if you're not restricted to roosters, I know in town, Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Jinx, all these places is a, a six hen limit. Um, there's availability that you can have chicks growing out, but until a certain age, I don't know what that is. But that That's the story with big box stores. Um, they get them, they sell them, they're, they're great birds. They're from great reputable um, hatcheries and they're NPIP, which is a testing that you do for pylorium and typhoid. NPIP is, it's a standard that some breeders keep and they have their whole flock tested for that. And some also do avian flu testing, which I personally, I, I'm never gonna do that. I mean, if there's avian flu outbreak and a chicken has it, the whole flock has it. So I don't, in my opinion, think it's normal to just randomly um, test for it because if there's no outbreak, it's just not happening. So um, there's no need to put your chickens through that or the owners through that. But so MPIP, if you are NPIP, you could only accept and bring in and buy MPIP birds to your farm. Um, that's kind of how that works. So. All the ones at the big box stores are NPIP because they're from big, huge commercial hatcheries. All the ones I brought in from my store were as well. 
I personally am an MPIP tester, so hopefully in the future I can help some people with that. So if you really, really desire a certain bird to add to your flock, but you don't want to mess up your status, then um, I could probably help you at the farmer's market. That's kind of one of my plans. Um, I just need to kind of figure it out. I've been back and forth talking to Sherry Davis with um, Oklahoma Department of Agriculture this week and last week. Uh, she's so sweet. If you guys haven't met her, she's so sweet. Don said I did. He said he hopes to see you in May at the meetup. Yes, Don. Um, so Sid was telling me about the meetup yesterday, and then I heard um, Mel talking about it. So I went over to Drift and Dreamers, and I didn't see that Mike. I didn't see any dates. Um, I know it's over, you know, at the Lake by their house or whatever. But if you know the dates, text it to me or put it down there so I can look it up. I was going to ask Annie Ann today and see what she knew about it, but um, or Drew. I, I just don't know. Um, so chickens, hatchery, and PIP. Yes, that is exactly what I want to talk about. So um, when you find private breeders all over Tulsa that have all different breeds, there's some questions you should ask. You should ask them if they're MPIP, and if it's not a big deal to you, that's great. That's really great, and um, that's totally your preference. You should ask if they have been vaccinated, because some people do not want their chicks vaccinated. And generally what it is is a vaccination for Merix. Merix is a disease that um, paralyzes the legs, and they... They stop eating, um, and then their their breath gets really shallow, and they pass. May seventeenth. Thank you, Hat Creek. Okay, yeah. Send me send me the link to the campgrounds. Love you got my you got my phone. Just text it to me. Um. Anyways, but Merrick's is not common. It's not common. Um, in all these years, knock on wood. I haven't known anybody that had it. Um, they do and can test it through the Oklahoma Department of, uh, of uh, Agriculture, but I, I don't know anybody with it. So if you care if your birds are vaccinated, that's one thing that it would be. There's also a vaccination against um, coccidiosis that I just became aware of two years ago, and it's actually a mist spray. They put them on a conveyor belt, the chicks, before they send them to you, and they do this mist respiratory spray. Um, I don't know how that would work. Because coccidiosis is a bacteria in the gut, and the medicine used to prevent or to treat it is a, th a thymine blocker, which is a liquid or powder. I just don't understand that one. So you could ask if they've been vaccinated, and then you could ask what feed that they've been on. Oh, Amy with Leonard Mountain. Uh, you know, Amy and Chris, she says, hello back there on the background. Uh, People see you creeping back there, Jeremy. You'll Facebook me. You don't have a number anymore. I lost it in my contact. Yeah, Facebook PM me and then give me your number and I'll text you. Dawn with Hat Creek, you guys. Um, ADD, I totally forgot what I was saying, you guys. 21 viewers in here. Awesome. If you are new and you're just coming in, go ahead and, and uh, make a comment and let us know where you're from. We're talking about chicks in the whole Tulsa area right now. Um, and I lost my train of thought whenever I read that comment and talked to Jeremy. Oh, vaccinate. Okay, so you can ask if they've been vaccinated. Um, that's up to you if you want them to be NPIP. That's up to you if you want them vaccinated or not. Uh, the next question is what food have they been on? So some people do um, medicated food, which is that thymine blocker. It has chorid in it. However, it's not enough to harm because if you give them too much in their water and you do it too often all the time, you can have birds that die. Um, it blocks the thymine and they stop getting their nutrition and they slowly just wither away and die yeah talk about vaccinating thank you Tristan he's always got my back um so you could ask about that and then you ask about the feed so you could they generally will do a 20 percent crumble and it could be a medicated or non-medicated I personally do a 28 percent crumble which is like a turkey feed I go down the rabbit holes and I do all research studies and things like that and um it's best for my chickens and what I want out of my chickens I spend a lot of time and money on my chickens so I want to give them the absolute best so it is worth the extra expense um that I put into my bird and then the other thing that you could um possibly search for would be if they're on organic non-gmo um, we did have that up at Beeline Feed. I, I'm pretty sure they still have that. So you're going to spend a lot more money, about $15 more per bag, for, per 40 or 50 pound bag. Um, but if you're going to be eating the birds and you're concerned about everything, you know, in the world right now, like Monsanto and all that terrible stuff that we're not going to talk about, that's a good option. And then the next thing is people worry about is, is it corn and soy? And most of it is all corn and soy. It's the biggest product um, produced by farmers in America and Uruguay and, and everywhere else. So um, 
Were they vaccinated and what are they eating? Those are, are two really good questions. MPIP if you care. Now, being on the owner of a feed, so a feed store side and talking to people about their issues and concerns, that was my job. It still is my job. I just, I'm full-time YouTube now and also full-time hatchery. Um, so I don't mind speaking with people and helping them if they want to be helped um, or if they have questions and if, if they're concerned. I, I always try to help. I honestly get 30 to 50 messages a day on my hatchery page. I'm constantly talking to everybody. Um, Let's just look at the comments real quick. Carmen, hello. Um, a lot of money worth it for a better feed. Yes, Carmen, it's very, very true. Um, their health, their um, their bone growth, their muscle growth, their feather texture, um, just their, over, their overall gut health, healthier birds that are fed healthier. Lots of diseases have to do with nutrition, you guys. If you um, want to go down, the, one of the rabbit holes that I go down often is Jeff Maddox. He is a chicken nutritionist, and I listen to all his podcasts all the time. Um, if you want to know more about chicken nutrition, that's where I get a lot of my information from. Amy with Leonard Mountain said, um, is there a difference between laying pellets and laying crumbles besides uh, one's a pellet and a crumble? No. One, one is formed by the machine into little pellets, so birds with big enough beaks can eat pellets. Crumbles is for babies because their beaks are too small. And like Tristan, Tristan breeds, um, are you still on here, Tristan, my love? He breeds a uh, quail. And what, what I experience with quail is the first one to two weeks, I take crumbles and I put them in a blender and make a powder because quail's little tiny, tiny beaks can't even pick up a crumble. So you can get crumble as a layer. You can get pellets as a layer. It's just the form that it comes in. You want a round bowl or you want a square bowl. That's That's kind of it. Felina Wakefield. Hello, Felina. You and your Polish. So Felina loves Polish more than I used to when I used to breed them, and she is a Polish addict. Good to see you, Felina. We were just posting where we're from on here. If you want to post where you're from, I, she's from Beggs. I know that. Guys, <laughs> I can't take this call, Curtis. If you're watching me, I'll call you back in a little bit. All right, we got 20 viewers in here, guys. Hello. Uh, Jesus Loving Home said, hello, happy healthy birds is the best. That's true. Yes, yes, Tristan. So um, like I was saying, Tristan has um, quail. He does a great job with them. Um, so on our quail, I don't have any more, but he does. Um, we feed them that 28% crumble. And that's what you, yep, begs, Lena. <laughs> uh, that's what you feed quail because it's the best for them. Um, it's the healthiest for them. Quail are small, compact, and all they do is eat and drink and poop, but they lay an egg every single day. So if you're trying to provide eggs for your family or if you're trying to provi provide meat, they are a perfect homestead bird. Um, Angie Weatherford, hello. My girls will only eat crumbles. They're spoiled. Yes, so um, that's another thing. Like Angie, I'm totally off track here, you guys. But like Angie just said, some don't like pellets, some only like crumble. Birds can be picky. Um, if you've asked me before in the past, I will tell you they will eat when they're hungry and they will get what you give them. So just putting it out there. You can let them be picky. That's great. Not a big deal. Crumbles are about a dollar more than pellets. So my girls get pellets and they eat it. <laughs> so what I was back to what I was talking about is when you're asking about your chickens. So when you're talking to a private breeder or you're at a farmer's market, See if they're MPIP, see if they've been vaccinated, see what feed that they're on, and there's all those options for feed, and that's up to you. Just so you're familiar with the background, uh, one thing that's really scary, and that's what I was just talking to you about, being a feed store owner and being in the chicken, chicken business for about eight years now with hatching and meeting a lot of people locally is there's so much disease. There's so much disease. That's why they tell you when you bring a new bird home that they need to be completely separate from your flock even on a separate side of your farm for 30 days. And you need to watch them and make sure that they don't have any symptoms of anything. Um, you know, it could be mites and it could be lice. It could be a respiratory infection. It could be bumblefoot. It could be a, a bacterial infection. They can have all kinds of problems. And that's why you keep them separated for 30 days. In case they do have a problem, you can call them and don't let them join your flock. So many times I see people get full-grown roosters and chickens and just throw it in their pen. A month later, all their chickens are dying. They all have mycoplasma. They have to have a closed flock. They probably should cull every single bird. And no, what they're doing is they're breeding them and they're selling their babies. And I hear of it all the time. And it just makes me sick that people do that because they think that they're giving the best treatment to their birds. However, they're not giving the best treatment to their customers. So 
be aware, listen, creep on their Facebook. That's something that I do a lot is I creep on people's Facebook, see who they are, um, make sure that they don't have uh, any big major issues going on with their hatcheries. See, see what people's reviews are on them. I know not a lot of people re review people on Facebook, but um, look at their comments. If someone's angry, they're going to put a comment on their on their page, and you're gonna you're gonna know it pretty soon. So let me look at the comments real quick over here. Felina, oh Slick, Stevie Jean is in Slick. Hello, Stevie Jean. You guys have a um a big mill in Slick where we used to get some of our cattle feed before we owned a feed store. Yes, Tristan, you said uh, grinding food for the baby quail so they don't choke on the feed even when it's already crumble like medicated. Yep, that's what I was telling them that you and I do when they're little. Um, Felina says, I was going to call you about cracked red pepper in the winter if there is really a benefit. Yes, yes, Felina, there is a benefit. So just putting it out there. I don't know what that is. He closed the door. It must have been a piece of dust. Uh, there is a benefit for it. Number one. The chickens cannot taste the pepper. Um, so peppers have something called capsaicin in it. Capsaicin reacts to the body. Um, and for some reason, it's been a long time since I've read about it, but it does work. I've tried it year after year after year. It does help and promote them to lay again. So when you're just sick of it, like you've been feeding these chickens for three months, you don't get one egg, you got 20 chickens, start putting either hot peppers, like the, the pizza peppers. I use chili powder or cayenne powder. Um, I, in the past, have bought the big had like a senorita on it and it was like red sauce it was a dollar at walmart putting that on their pellets and about day three to five you will start seeing eggs i have videos about that um if you don't believe me google it or go and look on facebook but that's a great that's a great way to get them to start laying um leonard mountain says i get about three eggs now a day it's exciting when i get my chicks from you i believe i'll, I'll have questions perfect perfect amy um tristan says uh what's he say it's great for natural dewormer also. Yes, Tristan, it is great for natural dewormer. Oh, hi, Susan. There's Skywas Ranch. She said that she creeps too. <laughs> you have to creep these days. You have to creep. Okay, I know I got sidetracked. There's 18 in here, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit thumbs up, thumbs down, some kind of reaction or lay, lay a comment on me. That'd be awesome. If you guys have questions, as you know, now's the time to ask me or to talk about it. And we have a great audience out here with other people with suggestions and ideas and thoughts too. Okay, so farmers markets, private sellers, those are the questions that you would ask about your chicks. Now at farmers markets, which we will be joining. I have a whole list. Let me show you. Um, since we are at home now and we're full-time YouTube and full-time hatchery. Oh, that's not it. These, these are all my notes from every single day. So the very first swap that we will be going to will be on Saturday, February 24th. And that's the Sand Springs swap. And they actually have uh, many swaps per week or per month. So in March, we're going to be at the Beeline swap on Saturday the 2nd. We're going to be at the Sand Springs swap on the 3rd. And then a whole week or so later, we're going to be at the Broken Air Tractor Supply on the 16th. And then on the 23rd, we're going to be at the Sand Springs swap. So if you know of any farm swaps around here, that would be a great opportunity for me to sell chickens at farmer's markets and livestock swaps. Please put it down there. Um, that would be helpful to me because I do really need to try to make a living doing this and I am trying my best. However, I really want to move birds. Like I'm going to have them within one to two days and then go to the sales. And generally what happens is they just all sell out and that's great. And I wait for the next week and I hatch more and it, it works out pretty well. So back to farmer's market livestock swaps. Don't touch people's chickens. Period. Do not touch people's chickens. Don't ask to touch their chickens. Don't let your kids stick their fingers through the little fences and the gates and the, just don't do it. Twofold, you guys. That's gross. You don't know where those chickens have been. Totally gross. Oh, balloons just came up. I don't know what that was, but that was awesome, guys. I just got balloons. <laughs> Did you see it? Did you see the balloons going up? That was crazy. Um, don't let your kids touch it. You don't touch it. That's gross. Like you're touching gross. You're touching poops and grossness and nastiness don't touch it that's disgusting um twofold i said the other way you touch it you get disease you go to the next one let your kids poke it and you know poke the little cage it's spreading the disease that is exactly how disease spreads it spreads by your hands your clothes your hair it spreads on your shoes it spreads on your tires of your car so don't do it 
please be conscious of it. If you see me, if you're around and you see in the, in the chicken pages and stuff, I have different sanitizers that are commercial grade or veterinarian grade. I will be wiping down anything that anybody touched. When you ask, I will say, I'm so sorry, honey, you cannot touch my birds. And when you ask why, they're tiny little babies and they don't have an immune system yet. So don't touch birds, don't ask to touch birds. Know that any birds from me, they will not be touched. They will actually be protected and people can't even breathe on them. So that's that's my thing. I'm a little bit of a germ freak when it comes to that because they're tiny little babies and no one deserves that. We do all our best to take good care of them and we've got a lot of money wrapped up in them and a lot of time and hopes for that year. Don't touch the birds. <sighs> hand sanitizer. Bring hand sanitizer to your farmer's markets and your livestock um, and your livestock swaps. Now, one thing, instead of commercial or veterinarian grade, um, which I'll post on my page later, a couple links to what my research shows that's really good for cleaning whenever you're, you know, at these places. I'll put the links on my on my Facebook page here. Um, whenever you get home, vinegar, straight vinegar. You can mix it with water if you're not if you want to, but vinegar is cheap. It's in a gallon. Put a little bit of, of vinegar in the bottom of a basin and step your feet in it. Make your kids step in it and then let it dry naturally. It'll be okay. Um, one part bleach, four parts water will do it, but I just don't like to bleach the kids' hay dudes and, and their hunting boots and stuff. I don't want them to disintegrate. So just, um, hey, Boone's brought his baby outside. Bubba. Sorry, I could see right out the window. Boone brought his baby out. It's going to get all muddy. Did you get his baby? Okay, so keep your hands clean. Clean your shoes. Um, when you go to people's houses and they have chickens, please be polite and ask them if you may see their chickens because of biosecurity reasons, I do not have people at my house. You will not see me inviting people over. You will not see people walking around. You will not see people taking videos on YouTube of my birds unless they have booties on or have scrubbed their, sh their shoes and um, they will have to remove their shirt whenever they're, they're going in and out. They'll have to have kind of a new cover and uh, take it off whenever they leave. Here's the reason. Dander dust from your house that's on your shoes, on your fingers, on your on your shirt, in your hair. You come and you're excited and you want to see my chickens. So you go and you see them and you touch. You don't even have to touch. It's respiratory, you guys. So I have huge biosecurity and you should do. You should do it. Don't let people just walk around your farm and touch your things. That's disgusting. Um, that's how disease spreads. And like I said, owning the feed store at Beeline, I heard so much and saw so much that I would never, never tell anybody because that's the benefit of me being your friend or trying to help you make it better for your chickens it also really freaked me out it really freaked me out about the dishonesty here um it's in the world but the dishonesty there is a lot of people with a lot of sick animals and then you show up sometimes at some livestock swaps and you see it you see these disgusting birds that are in living in hell in this cage and they haven't been fed and they look just oh, it's just so sad so do the right thing always wash your hands be polite I'm going to look at a couple a couple comments here, and then I'll get back to uh, spring chickens. Stevie Jean, hello. Oh, no, I just asked you in a message if you could come to Bristol on March 2nd. Hi, Stevie. I have that um, I have that email. I was just looking at it yesterday um, about March 2nd. In, um, you guys, Stevie Jean here. She's in charge of one of the homesteading groups in Bristow. Um, she's asked me to speak. I'd like to, but I need to talk a little bit further about that. Um, this sale is pretty big for me, especially being at our own establishment that we created at Beeline Feed. Um, I know you said all vendors need to be there by 9, and I wouldn't be able to be there by 1, but we'll, I'll email you. We'll talk to you soon on that at Stevie. Um, Chrissy Shockley, hello again. Um, it's, it's when you do the... You get balloons. Oh, cool. See? So if you guys give me a piece, I get balloons. Give me balloons, you guys. What other tricks do you know, Chrissy? I'm not on live often. That was so cool. Felina sent 99 stars. Thank you. I have never got stars before. I don't really know what it means, but... Oh! The dog just broke a balloon. Pick it up. Ruger, stop. Thank you, Felina, so much. That is so awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. I think I've answered everyone's questions. So don't touch, sanitize your cell, sanitize your feet. Um, biosecurity is key when you have birds. So let's talk about chicks. Let's go back and talk about once you decide food, vaccinations, all these things. Once you decide you want chicks, when you decide if you want them for meat or for beauty or for production. Okay. 
those are great questions that I kind of covered earlier. If you want to go back later and rewatch, we kind of covered that a little bit. Oh, thanks, Felina. I see the peace sign now. I'm gonna, oh, there's the blooms. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. Thank you. Um, Dawn with Hat Creek says, hi, Jeremy. Hello, hello. I don't know which way to go for you to see Jeremy. Where are you, baby? There you are. He's over here. He's been fixing that water pipe. If you guys watch us on Facebook, he's been trying to fix that water pipe. Um, so once you get past the food and the this and the that and you got chicks, these are the things that you are going to need. You, number one, it is not hard to have chickens. Don't go down the rabbit holes. Don't listen to what everybody else says. There is just a few things you need to do. They need a trough or a cage. They need heat, water, and food and bedding. That's it. Heat, water, food, bedding. So heat source can be a heat lamp. They're not that safe, but I do use them because they're secured and bolted to the back of my brooders. Or you could use a heat plate. A heat plate is a plate that you sit down on the bottom of your Rubbermaid container or your trough, and they go underneath it and stay warm. And whenever they don't, you know, like they want to go out and get a drink or whatever, they leave, they go get a drink and some food, and then they come right back. So those are the two options. Bedding, you can use Pine chips, don't ever use cedar. They have too much dust and they can cause respiratory issues. You can use pine chips. I see a lot of people use hay and straw on babies. I would never do that because those can harbor um, mites and lice. I just wouldn't do it. Um, they make paper shreds you can use. That would be great. They make those condensed um, pine chips that you can find at Tractor Supply. They look like little pellets. And when you add water to the bag, they expand. Um, lots of people use those for cat litter because then the cats don't get the litter and the poop on their feet and they actually come off when they wipe um, and it contains the moisture. Don said, uh, so can I feed pepper flakes to my chickens if my ducks are in the same pen? Our chickens are not laying, but I don't want to hurt the ducks. Yeah, ducks, chickens, quail, it's anything. It won't hurt them. If they really don't like it, they won't eat it, Don. Oh, <laughs> Tristan, you showed me a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, anyways, so bedding. Don't ever put them on paper towels. Do not ever put them on paper. Um, they cannot grip with their little feetsies and they'll get splay leg and splay leg is not an easy thing to deal with. Uh, generally they die. So be in control and in charge of that. Um, and then the next thing is waterers and feeders. So you can buy them at any big box store or any small feed store. Um, they make chick waters and chick feeders. I personally use the quail waterer. Um, is there a quail water out there by any chance? No, it's in it's in the brooder. It's all in the barn, okay. Um, the reservoir where you would put the water and it screws on and it flips over, it's a gravity feeder. The reservoir for the chick feeder is very, very small, so it could only get their little beak down there to get water. There's bigger ones for bigger chicks that the reservoir is that big and they can drown in it. They get in it and they drink and they get cold and they don't go back to their heat source and they die or they drown. So I personally like to use the, the quail waterers when they're very little, um, and you can continue to use that until they are fully feathered to go outside. So give them fresh water, fresh food, give them a heat source, make sure that their bedding's always clean and you're good. Now with the heat, if they're all huddled in a corner and you've got heat over here, that means that they're too hot and they're trying to get away. If you got heat here and they're all huddled under the heat, that means they're freezing and the, the, the lamp or the heat source is not low enough. If they're just kind of hanging out, doing their own thing all over the trough or the Rubbermaid container, they're happy. They are happy. Check their butts every day check their butts and make sure they don't get poopy butt um, poopy butt is where they can't control their hot and cold or they stay under the heat too long um, and then the poop kind of sticks to their butt and then they poop it's kind of like an ice cold they poop again and it hardens and gets dry and then they poop again and it hardens and gets dry um, it's because of heat it's always a heat problem so they're either too hot too cold and they're going back and forth too much you won't experience that if you have the heat perfect the first week the chicks need to be at a 95 to 98 degrees. The next week, for the next three weeks, it goes down five degrees until about four weeks. Now, between four weeks and six weeks, they should be fully feathered and off heat. They should not need heat. Now, if you had chicks right now that are fully feathered and they're four to six weeks, I would not put them outside. The nights are still in the 30s. The days are in the 40s. If it rains, they'll get cold, they'll be wet, and they will get the wind on them and they will die. That's just the experience that I have with chicks over the years. So um, just be cautious and and look and see and really think what you're gonna do. Just keep them out of the wind and out of the cold, uh, 
the wind and the rain that that's going to be your main thing they do like to huddle in corners together i have many many times had stockpiles where they get in the corner and they just try to stay warm after you take them off and you come out the next morning there's a dead chick because of it. it was crushed and i don't mean chicks i mean good size because i keep mine in way too long so those are just some of the things about chickens um, for you to look into and to think about and the questions to ask for spring chickens now I'm going to look at the comments real quick. Um, so heat mats, plates, or heat bulbs, what do you prefer? Dawn heat bulbs are really um, controversial because lots of people's houses and barns burn down. I do use heat bulbs, but mine are bolted to the back of my brooder. Um, Jeremy made them that way, uh, so they will never move no matter what. So I'm comfortable with it. In my big like tractor supply, GQF brooders, I have plates. Um, I keep everything, all my chicks, also if you guys are interested in my chicks um, ever, all my chicks, like I said, they don't go on pine chips. Those babies that were in that box that I brought in here to show you, they've never seen pine chips before, so they had them like all over them. They were probably like fluffing themselves in it. I keep everyone on hardware cloth. The reason I do it is because I never, ever, again, knock on wood, have coccidiosis issues. Coccidiosis is a bacteria. It's in the gut of chickens. Some get it, some don't. Some get more immunity, some don't. If they're outside sooner, then generally they um, build immunities faster. But mine aren't hardware cloth. Their poop goes straight down and is collected. They don't sit, stand, peck, or eat other people's poop. When you have dirty bedding and they poop everywhere, and they, it's just gross. And it's wet because of the waterer, and it, that, that's a, that harbors all the bacteria. So I keep all mine on hardware cloth, which that works for me. That works for me. Guys, I've got 17 people in here. Have you all left a comment so I could see who's in here? And if you guys have any questions for me, here I am. Now's your time to ask. Okay, well, I am going to continue with the next thing. I am going to talk about, after I get some more coffee, I am going to talk about the chicken eggs. So this will go back to the question of what do you want? Do you want meat chickens? Do you want really good production layers? Or do you just want the pretty eggs like on Pinterest and on Instagram? Hi, Kenzie. How are you? Good to see you on here. Tristan said hardware cloth is the way to go. Um, check out my new Facebook page, Tristan's Fluffy Butt Hut. Yes, Tristan makes awesome, awesome brooders, you guys. If you need any brooders, um, Tristan, can you put a link in the comment for me? See if Facebook allows you to do that. I know lots of places don't allow you to put actual links, but see if you can put a link to that page. Um, Tristan uh, has built most recently. Oh, miss you, Kinsey. So Kinsey's saying she misses us. So she is um, someone that we met through the feed store here in Mounds at Beeline Feed. So um, Kinsey, what I was telling everybody is here I am, access to me as it was when we were at the feed store. Let everybody know that I'm not there anymore. They're not going to see the amount of chicks or the varieties of chicks that I brought into the whole um, northeast Oklahoma. Um, but I still have some special chicks. I have rainbow hatching egg um, or, or rainbow egg envy chicks. Okay, so I was going to talk about eggs. Like I said earlier, I do not have eggs to sit here and show you. Um, it has been really cold the last couple of weeks. Lots of them get frozen, even though I was out there every couple of hours. I did not sell any eggs, and I will not um, until now because the temperature has warmed up, um, and now the girls need to start producing, uh, producing more eggs more often now because I've had them in the barn, and they haven't had their regular cyclical light, so they're going to have to get back outside and have to get back used to the daylight, and they'll start laying again because I've been protecting them in the barn. Eggs. So there's meat birds. Meat birds, you can't just find from a local breeder. They are artificially inseminated. They are a cross. Have you ever heard of a, a Cornish cross? They are a cross of certain birds to make them grow and uh, grow fast. You would feed these birds, they're generally white, sometimes they're red or brown, um, they're called meat birds. You would feed these birds out for eight to 10 weeks. They will have a butcher weight of five, six, seven pounds. You feed them that 28% crumble that I was talking about earlier. That's what you feed them the whole time. It's very expensive. The birds are not very expensive, but you have to order them from a hatchery. Like I said, they're artificially inseminated. So if you're on all these local chicken pages looking for them, you're not gonna find them. But there's some really great hatcheries out there. Um, so that's your meat bird. Meat birds are to be eaten. They cannot carry the weight and the stress on their heart. If you don't butcher them, 
Now, there's special cases. I had one that was two years old. Her name was Field Trip, but they're special cases. They're not ones that you keep for your children. They will slowly die of heart attacks, and, and you won't have any. They are not, they're not for pets. They're for food. The, the next one that I was talking about are really good layers. So if you're wanting just a really good layer, there's so many options for you. If you want something that's 300 plus eggs a year, that would be laying almost every day, which is insane. Your top three picks are gonna be, and I will let you know, and if you ever ask me, I do not like any of these. I do not have these on my farm. I will not have these on my farm. Number one is leghorn, white leghorn. They are terribly flighty. They will get in your bucket. They will fly on top of you. They are greedy. They act like you stole their baby and they're looking for it. They're just frantic. So white leghorn, Rhode Island red, barred rock. Rhode Island reds are mean girls. They're always mean. If you are not red, they do not like you. They don't like anybody of any other color than red. You bring anybody new into the flock, they will peck them. They will make them feel unwelcome. They're mean girls. I don't like them. Roosters are generally pretty big jerks. Um, barred rocks, they're super fluffy and sweet, generally really healthy. They lay good. They lay a light tan egg. Um, they just don't have personality. They're just kind of there. Um, so I don't have any of those birds here, but you can find those at any of the big box stores. Um, they're wonderful birds. Um, from that same thought process of really good layers, there's some other birds that are friendly and super sweet that don't lay as much, but they're pretty good layers, that's going to be your Orpingtons and your Wyandots. Those are super sweet, friendly birds for the family. So if you want just like super sweet birds for the kids to carry around and to come to you when you call them, stick with your Orpington or your Wyandot. And now the third category is your Instagram, Pinterest, Rainbow Egg Envy. That's me. I'm your girl, Rainbow Egg Envy. Hi, Candace. How are you? Christy, uh, there are questions on the hatchery page live. Maybe let them know you are live in two pages and not seeing those comments. Um, Candace, this is the first time I've done it. So I did put to share the live on both of my pages. Um, so you guys, be, I don't understand this, but my friend Candace says um, there are questions on the hatchery page live. Maybe let them know that you're live on two pages. Okay, that makes sense. So I guess um, people are asking me questions over there, but it's not combining them on my Facebook. And I'm so sorry if that's happening. I am actually in Paragon Ridge Ranch, and then it's it's shadowing over to Paragon Homestead Hatchery. Thank you so much, Candace, for letting me know that. Um, Dee Dee says, do you know someone who butchers? I don't. I don't, Dee Dee. I'm sorry. I know there's a mobile butcher that I've seen on some local Facebook pages um, that go, comes to your home and butchers your butchers your chickens for you. So let's get back to the three different types in, in my book of chickens. So we're at Rainbow Egg Envy. That's me. I've worked for years on it. I take pride in it, and I will tell you, and you could think it's conceited, I have all the colors, and I'm working on better, deeper, truer colors in my olive eggers. So you see Pinterest, you see Instagram, you see all these people with their wonderful farm life that looks like they're a princess. We all know it's not true. Nothing like that exists. That's just for Instagram, you guys. But what is true is the colors of those eggs and the beauty of those chickens. Not the not what they're wearing, what their coffee cup looks like, or any of that stuff, you guys. So rainbow. Rainbow eggs are generally your blues, your dark chocolates, greens of all different colors, and then like a pinkish. I don't have white eggs. White eggs are great. If you want white eggs in your, in your cute little basket, that's great too. So let me tell you what I have. For my pink eggs, salmon faverols. They're a light tan, but they're always on the pink side. I personally breed salmon faverols and they are from Showbirds. Um, if you guys have any interest in them, you can go over to Paragon Homestead Hatchery. You can see pictures of them. Uh, later on, you can go back and rewind this live. I showed them earlier. Um, I might be able to go grab them and show them again towards the end when we're done. Black Copper Morans. That's going to be your dark chocolate egg. Now, you guys, Black Copper Morans, I see them all the time on these Facebook pages, and I ask questions like, can we see the colors of your eggs, and people don't show it. Just because you get one doesn't mean it's going to lay chocolate eggs. What I see often, and, and here's an example, if you just go to a big commercial hatchery or to Tractor Supply and get a Black Copper Moran, it's going to be a really light tan egg, just like a Bard Rock. You're not going to be able to tell the difference. If you want real good quality Black Copper Morans that lay dark chocolate, there's a lot of work that goes into it. 
lots and lots of breeding, lots of saving eggs from only certain colors and breeding them and growing them out and seeing what their offspring are, lots of culling their standards of perfection as far as like bleeding through of the copper on the chest on the males, halo around their necks, the shape of a U or a long back or a short back. Like there's so much for standards of perfections on the girls they're copper or not copper on their neck. Like there's just so much you guys. So, and it takes a lot of time and growing out to get there in many, many years. So that's what you get, what you pay for. So if you want dark brown eggs, that's what I've got. I've got the dark chocolate eggs and they're only getting better. I'm working on certain things with trying to just produce darker and darker and darker. And that's what we do. We're working avidly. And um, that's what we do as lovers of chickens and lovers of the colors. So we got the pink, we got the dark brown, blue. I have lavender Americanas that lay a bright blue. Americana is spelled A-M-E-R-A-U-C-A-N-A, -A -A, you guys. Do not get that confused with Easter Eggers or Americana. Those are made up names by hatcheries and by people. Now, they're wonderful birds. They're just a mix where one of the parents had a blue gene for blue eggs, and they're just a mix. They're wonderful birds. They lay a lot. They're beautiful. They're friendly. They're some of the best birds of those Easter Eggers, but they're not a pure Americana. A pure Americana has two genes for blue eggs. They're called a true blue. Um, if you get into the genetics and you know what I'm talking about, if not, you guys could ask me any kind of questions um, over at Paragon Homestead Hatchery. I try to keep all my chicken questions over there so I can keep them in one spot. Like I said, I get 30 to 50 messages a day, so I try to keep them all in one spot. Um, if you message me on here, you, here you'll get a like, little message like, hey, if you want to talk to me, go over to the other page. So that's going to be your true blue. There's other ones out there that lay blue, like Crested Cream Light Bars. Theirs are very white powdery blue. I have cream leg bars. Um, I have, I think 10 girls and a boy. And recently, a couple days ago, I was talking to um, a good customer. We were talking about eggs and if hers ever laid for me. And hers lay more of a green. Um, it is accepted by the standard. You can have cream leg bars that lay more of the green blue instead of the blue blue. My chickens lay blue. That means that my rooster must have come from somewhere that laid more green. So their offspring, offspring are laying more green. You guys, it is a sex, it's an auto sex chicken. You can tell as soon as it's born, if it's boy or girl, it's a $7 chicken and you get a girl. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. So I still am concerned. I still want them to lay blue and not green blue. I am on the hunt for a cream leg bar rooster from somebody out of the Cream Leg Bar Association of America. But that's another blue option. Let's talk about olive eggers. Olive eggers happen the very first breeding of someone from a brown egg and someone from a blue egg are together. Blue, blue and brown make green, right? So that first generation offspring, if they're female, they will always lay green. Guaranteed, it's going to lay green. So that's called an F1. Now, you take those two F1s and you breed them back again. That's called an F2 because that's a second generation it's not 100% going to be green because now if you guys are, remember the Punnett Square at school, um, you start adding varieties. So there's 25% of this and 25% of that. It's a whole, it's a whole rabbit hole that I go down often. Um, so what I have here is multi-generational olive eggers. So I have F3 through F5. That means they've been bred to bread to bread and they lay green eggs and green speckled eggs. And I have them in there with a very dark brown jeaned rooster, which is a black copper maroon. So most babies, well, all, almost all, except one baby uh, come out black, and then there's one hen whose babies come out gray. I showed you earlier, and I, I can show you again here in a little bit if Jeremy didn't put them back out in the brooder. Um, their offspring, if they're female, are 50% dark, dark green is what I'm going to get, or 50% Kalamata. That's an olive. That's a dark brown olive. So that is the olive eggers that I'm working on, but I also have those F1s where it's like guaranteed light green, light green, light green. So um, we're working on that. So that gives you your green, your blue, your chocolate, and your pink. Now let's talk about pink, like rose pink and purple eggs. I do not have them. It could be a project that me or anybody else can be having, um, but I don't have them. And I, if you want to message me over on Paragon Homestead Hatchery, I can send you a couple breeders that I know that do have them. A purple egg is a black copper moran with a heavy bloom. A bloom is a powdery looking coating that looks like a coating on the outside of an egg. And if you lick your finger and go like this, you, you'll see that it's black copper moran underneath. I'm sure you've seen them all on Instagram and on Pinterest. People do a heart and you can see the underneath color. The bloom is a coating that the, the hen puts on the egg whenever it's laid to protect it from bacteria. 
Sometimes breeders take these heavy blooms and they keep them separated and they only breed heavy blooms to heavy blooms, whatever color. Um, let's just say black copper moran. And generation after generation, the blooms get darker. So those eggs look purple. Sometimes they look pink, but if you were to lick your finger. Um, so those are a heavy bloom. That's what makes the purple. The same with the pink. The pink would be a lighter colored eggshell, not a black copper moran. Yeah, the chicks are still in here. I hear them. Um, it would be a lighter colored eggshell chicken that has heavy blooms, and the breeders decided to do heavy bloom to heavy bloom and make offspring that make heavy bloom. Um, sometimes you can see a creamy green, and that's going to be on your olive eggers heavy bloom. So that's how you get all those other colors. They're not true colors. They're a bloom coating. I'm going to answer some, some questions over here uh, before I go on. All right. Amy says, I want blue eggs in my mix. That's why I want... Uh, that's why I went to you because you know all that stuff. Well, thank you, Amy. Ashley, hi, love. Whiting True Blue lay a good amount of blue eggs. Yes, see, that's another breed that lays blue, Whiting True Blue. So Whiting True Blue is a breed. Um, Dr. Whiting actually uh, created them back in, I think, the 90s. He made Whiting True Blue and Whiting True Green, and they are a mix of many different chickens, including like an Americana, something that has a, a blue gene. Um, so many generations after so many generations after so many generations, they got, some, got them to be different colored feather patterns and colors, but consistently lay a blue egg. And they are also think are mixed with uh, leghorn somewhere down the row. So they're 300 plus those are good layers. I forgot about those, Ashley. Thank you so much. They're 300 plus a year on the Whiting True Blues. That is an awesome breed if you guys want um, high production and pretty eggs. There's also the Whiting True Green. They're going to be a really light green, and they should be, I think it's a 146th chance that they lay a brown egg. So it's not a very high chance. Um, Tristan says, love all the information you are always willing to give to us <laughs> foul lovers. I gotta get back to my business. I'll catch up with you guys later. I love, uh, thank you, Chrissy, Jeremy, our outstanding people. Thank you, Tristan, we miss you guys. Give Paisley a kiss for us. Um, yeah, white and true, blues and true greens. I forgot, thank you, Ashley, so much. There's so many out there, you guys. Um, so, so, so many. Okay, so we just talked about the egg colors. Those are the egg colors that I have and that I love and that obviously and apparently many people in the Tulsa area love too. Um, I have been pretty successful. I take good care of my birds. I bought really good stock on my black copper morans and my Faverals and my lavender americana. My cream leg bars are just hatchery quality. I let everybody know that up front. But like I said, it's a, it's a very inexpensive bird for getting a pullet and they happen to lay more green blue instead of blue blue. Um, I'm working on it, but again, it's just a $7 bird. Um, that is an amazing bird. They are a little flighty, by the way. They are a little flighty, but they're amazing because then you can make sure that you get girls. And like I said earlier, for all these neighborhoods who can only have seven, or sorry, six girls, no roosters, that, that's great for them. Um, bye, Amy. See you guys later. You're welcome for the information. Now, if I don't breed, the, breed and you have a question, I still welcome you to, to put a question down below this live or to go over to Paragon Homestead Hatchery and ask me there. Um, because I know a lot of people, um, a lot of people that I trust and a lot of people that I know their birds and that I have been to their homes. Um, so I'm a little deeper with these people because they take really excellent care of their animals. And I could refer you, um, like, like Tristan was on here, I would refer you to Tristan for Black Americanas or for Easter Eggers. I have a friend named uh, Terry. He has Brahmas. I have a friend named Curtis. He has Wine Dots. So I, I have a pretty good mix of all, um, all the friends that have all the things. So if you guys ever have a question, feel free to message me. I am on there a lot answering messages, but if it sometime goes by, please be patient with me. Um, I'm running a, a farm with many, many animals. I'm taking care of the hatchery, the incubator, all the pigs, the cows, I mean, everything. Um, and running a YouTube channel and editing and then meeting people. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. So I promise to get back with you. Um, just give me a little bit of time. It's usually within an hour, but sometimes, uh, sometimes I have to put my phone down because I'm completely overwhelmed, and I it doesn't make me feel good. I need to get off my phone sometimes. But 
All right, guys, do you guys have any more questions? We have been on here for an hour and three minutes. Um, I'm going to try to tighten it up and get off of here. Unless anybody has any more questions, I'll give you a minute or so. Put them down in the comments. Um, let's see here. You guys, we did so good. We've got 10 viewers in right now. 26 reactions, 68 comments, two shares. Thank you so much, you guys. If you've enjoyed this, please share it. It is so helpful for me on our Paragon Ridge channel here. Um, if you want to share this for some spring chicken information i would love 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 for you to do that um that really helps me as a small business owner it really helps me to uh, stay in the community to share my knowledge um lots of it's evergreen knowledge so it's stuff that's never going to change you know chicks need heat water food that's never going to change um but dd gotta run uh great to see you thanks for all yes thank you dd thank you amy thank you tristan everybody's getting back back from their lunch have to get back to work Okay, guys, everyone's going out, so I'm going to go out too, you guys. Please like, follow this channel, this page. Uh, all the chicken and the eggs and the hatchery information from Chrissy and Jeremy is over at Paragon Homestead Hatchery. So if you can go over there. Oh, hi, Danielle. Uh, Paragon Homestead Hatchery is for all my chicken stuff. Paragon Ridge Ranch, this channel that I'm live on right now, is our YouTube channel and the name of our farm. So if you guys haven't already, it would be amazing if you got to uh, YouTube, to Paragon Ridge Ranch, and go ahead and subscribe and click all on the notifications. That is us every two or three days. I post, let's see, I post on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So I put all of our um, farm vlog and our happenings and all the things that go on out here on there. We have Coon Coon Pigs, Highland Cow, you guys, I always have all my chickens and the chicks. I always have all that on there. Um, we discuss tons of farm things. Pretty soon it's going to be gardening. If you guys are homesteaders like we are and you're looking for rainbow hatching eggs, I'm your girl. If you're looking for fun farm stuff that's really happening, that's really true, that's not fake, that's not Instagram story worthy, um, real true farm work and real true people that love what they're doing, go over to our YouTube, Paragon Ridge Ranch, um, and subscribe. And share it with your friends because that would be so helpful for us. And that's free. All this stuff I'm asking you to do, it's free. It's free for you, but it helps me accumulate more subscribers and more help to watch my videos. So I appreciate you. Thank you, Danielle. You got that? Oh, Ashley. I, he says, I love your babies. I love your babies too. I need to get with you, Ashley. I need to come over this week. But guys, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for spending the last hour and six minutes with me. I love it. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Let's... <laughs>